Hello, welcome back to The Witness. Um, so, as promised, we're going to go through the Glasshouse Factory, exploring all the secrets. Having said that, there's only actually one environmental puzzle. There's no audio logs, there's nothing else other than the one environmental puzzle. And maybe one or one easter egg uh, but that's about it so instead what we'll do is uh, we'll talk, talk about this uh, we'll recap basically on this um, part here and we'll talk about it while we're exploring that area so Werner Heisenberg basically brought up that there's two different schools of thought one is that there's a mystical and personal force basically running all things and this one uh, a realist uh, Albert Einstein's view that all things are connected to science and basically science says everything um, and he was proposing that there might be a blending of the two ideas um, since we're referring to an impersonal force uh, there doesn't have to be this contradiction so much and uh, it's all about uh, he experimented with yoga and um, uh, Shamad oh, I can't remember the uh, religion uh, religious beliefs but basically that uh, uh, to be one with nature and uh, uh, to be one with this impersonal force and that's basically where uh, it all stemmed um, so basically Look, in all honesty, um, there's a couple things science will never agree on. And uh, one of those things science cannot bend in is with a uh, that there's a young Earth. And this is reasonable if you really stop and look at the evidence. Um, they use well over 30 various forms of dating the Earth. Uh, from radiocarbon dating to uh, tree ring dating to uh, glacier dating because every year snow falls performing layers and things get stuck in those uh, layers of snow um, to volcanic uh, so every volcano that erupts um, produces a layer of dirt and you can date the various volcanic eruptions um, to solar uh, solar hitting rocks uh, to uh, other things uh, the fossil record the list just goes on there's well well over 30 different methods of dating the earth so you will never ever 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 and it would be unreasonable uh, to expect science to go you know what with all these da da data that we're getting all pointing to an old earth we got it wrong so that's unreasonable now Mysticism believes basically just in an impersonal force. Nothing really. And that doesn't go against the old earth. So to some degree there's no there's no contradiction there. But then I broadened it because that was back in the 1900s, early 1900s. Could that same argument apply therefore to creationists? To uh, religious people? Because not all religion believes in a young earth. Some do, and some won't bend on that fact, and I'll explain that uh, the reason for that later. Now, to be a true searcher, you need to argue both sides of the coin. You need to be uh, proficient in arguing both for creation and against creation. And whichever argument uh, goes greater, um, well, both, technically, if you argue as best as you can on both sides, you'll improve both arguments. And whether you like it or not, one argument should outweigh the other argument. And I guess being objective is what it means to be a true searcher. But anyway, we'll just put a pause it there. I want to show you something. So basically, we're in a art area which is all about construction and shapes and and making and building. Now, what I found interesting about this room, so if um, you'll notice that all these shapes are actually different and they're all the various solutions to this puzzle so there's eight ways of solving this puzzle take for instance uh, is it eight? yep uh, so this is that and notice that one shoots up in the air now and this one is that and now that one shoots up in the air. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? 
Um, so the reason for that is actually because back here we have an environmental puzzle. And I'll show you what happened. I will purposely not be able to solve it so I can show you how clever it is. So here I am. I know there's an environmental puzzle here. I can connect to JB in the sky and I cannot make this connect. No matter how far back I go, I just can't make this connect. So you've probably guessed it. I've got to raise the pedestal. So isn't that pretty cool? That, that, that's really well done. That's, that's, that's uh, very well invented. So again, there's that one which is basically just this. And that ra now raises that up. Which is now going to allow me to connect. Now, isn't that awesome? I thought I thought that was very, very clever. I'd never appreciated that at the time of seeing this. Now, as I said, some religions. Oh, first we'll connect with JB in the sky. JB in the sky. We will connect to you with art. And that connects over to that desert obelisk over there. That is so cool. And that's the only secret to... <laughs> that's it. That's the only secret to the glasshouse uh, area. Um, so there's certain religions that believe in a young earth. And uh, no disrespect, because um, I, I have many friends in one of the religion, uh, Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, they are young earth people. They will not ever, as far as I'm convinced, um, change their belief systems. And the reason why they need to keep believing in a young earth is because um, they literally believe God created the world in seven days, seven literal days. And, uh, and the reason for that is because the rest of their belief systems, their whole framework of their belief systems are based on that. For instance, they believe that uh, because God created uh, the world in six days and rested on the seventh, um, it, it gave significant uh, um, religious value to the Sabbath, which is uh, the day of rest. And they rest every Saturday, which is they believe is a true um, Sabbath resting day. And they believe that's the identification mark of their religion being the true religion. Because in the Bible, um, basically Jesus said, Obey all my commandments, and they believe Jesus is God. Therefore, they believe Jesus was talking about the Mosaic Law, and that that was the identifying mark of the true religion. So, basically, in a nutshell, if you take out that idea of this young earth, then you have to change their, their belief of what the original purpose of the Sabbath was. And now if you change that, then you also have to change the identification mark of what a true religion is. Therefore, you would also have to change the uh, idea that it was actually referring to the Mosaic Law when Jesus said, Obey all my commandments. And the list goes on. So by taking one single simple idea out of the equation, the whole the rest of their belief system starts to falter and, and shake. Now, it would be possible if they were to change the rest, but then they become very, very much like other religions. So, um, there will, what this guy was saying about can there be a blending of beliefs between mysticism and science, or creation and, and, and science? Yes and no. Not all religions will be able to make that blend. They cannot walk that middle road. Um, unless if they change a fundamental part of their belief system. It will never happen. Now, Seventh-day Adventists basically say, All things are possible with God. Science doesn't take that into equation. So it must be bad science. But if you honestly looked at that science and looked at the 30 methods that the scientific community uh, basically used to date the Earth and everything around it, you're really up for a, a really hard argument if you really, really deeply, truthfully looked into the matter. 
but most people don't. They just go, all things are possible with God, therefore, bad science. But as I said, not all religions believe that uh, the Earth is an old, uh, a young Earth. And the other uh, different uh, belief is, look, evolutionists believe, of course, in evolution. Now, as much as evolutionists don't understand this, most cre uh, creationists actually agree. Evolution, microevolution, does exist. There's no argument amongst creationists. There is zero argument about the Darwin Finches. There is zero argument when it comes to superbugs. Adaption, microevolution, absolutely exists. All dogs in this planet came from a series of two dogs. Uh, selective breeding, etc. All dogs came. There is no argument there whatsoever. So why scientists keep arguing about that, I don't know. Where the argument happens is in macroevolution, uh, a, a, a changing of species. Now, I'm going to use plants because they always use animals, but I, I like to use plants. So a banana tree to a creation, creationist will always produce bananas. You will never ever have in the whole history, in the fossil record, anything. A banana produce anything else other than a banana. Uh, granted, there's fruit salad trees thanks to grafting, but a fruit salad tree does not produce a fruit salad tree. Whatever fruit falls from that salad tree will only produce according to its kind. A banana tree, bananas will only produce bananas, etc, etc. Now the same thing happens with animals. Yes, you might find two animals that are very similar. Well, can they not be same species? But d does that actually prove that one species evolved into another species? Now that's a very interesting question and now one that's been debated for a very, very long time. And I won't get into that argument here. But again, there is no difference between microevolutionists. Creationists and evolutionists do actually agree with microevolution. There is no need for a debate there. So I don't know why scientists keep harping on that fact. It doesn't prove that things did not have an intelligent design behind it all. Now, a friend of mine once made a, uh, a profound statement, and he's an evolutionist. He made a, a statement that I, I never forget. He said, one thing that he can't understand as an evolutionist is how art comes into play. For instance, you don't need art in evolution. Art doesn't, isn't a part of survival of the fittest. And art has been profoundly with mankind since the dawn of mankind. If you go back to cave paintings, everything, they capture events to, to artistic uh, design merits. And that is unique to humankind. You don't see an elephant paint a picture of a sunset just because he's awe inspired by a sunset you'll never see a chimpanzee you know go around painting the tree saying it's his favorite tree you won't find a dog forming um uh the memory of an event in in, in a picturesque picture form with his uh, paw prints and mud the day that he changed from good old dog biscuits to chump treats you know you'll never have any artistic and there's just no need amongst any it is uniquely for humans humans and art are part and parcel that whole wanting to express themselves about their surroundings that is a profound thing that is now we'll start. We're we'll part of that same that same periodic table as you know, uh, as all the other animals, but we're very vastly different. And what makes us that different? It isn't a small thing. It is a huge thing. Now evolutionists state, well, it took billions of years, and that proof is, you know, over billions of years of age. But if you really looked at um, evidence, there was a, you know, an explosion of fish. There was an explosion of, 
of, of birds. There was an explosion. It wasn't a gradual thing. It was an explosive event that took place. Same with humans. An explosive event that suddenly came and it very rapidly increased. Now here we have a little Easter egg of um, Jonathan Bloom's previous game called Braid. So there we have that there. Um, and just one quick thing before we sign off here. Uh, the reason why um, creationists don't have a problem with Old Earth is because understanding of the old Aramaic language has improved. Now the Bible was written in Aramaic and uh, of course it says that God created the world in seven days or six days and rested on the seventh. Now the Aramaic word for day can have two meanings. One is a literal 24 hour day and the other is just an unspecified period of time. So um, now when you look at the Apostle Paul's statements, the Apostle Paul states that um, they're still in God's rest. So when he looked at the old Aramaic context, he saw that that Aramaic word for day actually meant an unspecified period of time. Now, the reason why this is profound is it's not referring to a time period that we need to focus on, but the order of events taking place and that this can be accumulative. Now, I'm going to explain it here in this room. So let's say that I'm God. And I decide that for the first creative task, I will begin to make the red vase. Now, as I'm beginning to make the red vase, I'm thinking, well, I need to make a pink vase, my second creative task. So I start working on the second creative task. But while I'm doing that, I'm still going back and still, still improving on the first one. I'm doing both at exactly the same time. And then I see the need of making a third uh, a blue vase. So again, I start, you know, creating this, but I'm still working on the other two. Now, at some point, I might decide to finish with this vase. I've done it. This is good. This vase is finished. But then I begin to create the fourth vase while working on the second, third, and fourth, and so forth. And that's the same when it came to the Bible and the explanation of events. He first needed to create light, then he needed to cre create land, then he needed to create water, little seas, uh, uh, vegetation, animals, no, uh, birds and fish, animals, and then man, and so forth. Now, while he was creating these tasks, he could be improving the light conditions. He could be improving the relationship of the sun and the atmosphere. He could have been creating this atmosphere as well as improving the sea condition. So it wasn't referring to literal time periods, but more the order of events. And when you look at the order of events from a cumulative standpoint, can intelligent design and the blending of that be with science and a scientific understanding. Now that is a very interesting question and I'll leave it on that. Join me next time as I hope I've explained that as easy as I can. Uh, I don't like to use um, you know long elaborated words that you know lose the translation of what the principal uh, statements are. Um, but uh, join me next time as we look into Symmetry, Symmetry Island and uh, look at all the uh, puzzles and audio logs in there. And there's absolutely heaps. Oh, and by the way, there was a Bluetooth puzzle. I did forget to show you that. Um, uh, I got lost in there. So this is what the game's all about, uh, is about this idea of impersonal force, this intelligent design, this evolution standpoint, and basically, basically um, mankind in general and their mortality. So there's the Bluetooth, and you'll notice that puzzle, even though the backgrounds get swarped, the solution always remains the same. Well, until next time, bye for now.